Morning everybody, I'm gonna do a video for the lab on tension versus equilibrium. So I'm gonna show you the, this is kind of like the Huggy Bear demonstration that we looked at in class earlier this week and then you saw a tutorial on where we looked at tensions when Huggy Bear, Huggy Bear was hanging in a string and ultimately we're gonna use those tensions and uh, corresponding angles to determine the weight of Huggy Bear. In this lab, we're gonna take it a step further. We're also gonna look at the relationship between hanging angle and the tension in the string and even how the components change. So if um, I'm gonna stop the video here and then I'm gonna show you the setup and then we'll start taking measurements. So there you can see our basic setup. I've got a support with a spring scale hanging on it. I've got a cart that is uh, filling in for Huggy Bear hanging there between the strings and then I have another one. So I'm going to change the hanging angle and the hanging angle, very important, this is on your diagram, is the angle that this string makes with the horizontal. Okay, I'm not gonna measure that directly. I'm gonna measure the angle that the string makes with itself down here. Okay, and then you can use a little geometry to figure out what that hanging angle is. I'm gonna change the angle by basically shortening the string between each, uh, for each trial uh, and so I'll do that in stops and starts and we'll get about five or six data points so let's get our first set of data okay so our tension is red right there okay so it's clearly between 8 and 10 the markings on the spring scale uh, okay everything every mark is 0.25 so I'll let you read that as best you can and then let's turn our attention to the angle. So what I'm going to do is I've got the circular protractor and I'm going to line up zero is where it says N there and I'm going to line up with one of the strings and you can't really tell that so I'm going to focus on where the other one is. So I'll try to read that angle. It's not perfect. It's hard for me to keep my hands straight so it looks around 65 degrees. All right so I'll do the change the string and then we'll get the second measure. Okay, so the second angle or second measurement, we see there's a slight change. We are closer to nine, okay, between eight and nine right there. And the corresponding angle hopefully is measurably distant, different. And let me get that lined up. And there we can see as my hand wobbles around. Sorry about that. So we're between 70 and 75 degrees. So. Our uncertainty is gonna be probably a few degrees, but that's all right. Let me just try this one more time. And there we go, okay. So our third trial, get that better oriented. So we're now above 10 Newtons, okay. So our tension is going up as our angle between the string is increasing, but that means a decreasing let me get that protractor oriented better. Okay, so we now are up to between 90 and 100 degrees between the string. Let's do a fourth one, we'll try to get two more. So here we're at trial number four. Okay, so the ring scale is quite, almost not horizontal, but it's getting much more horizontal. Okay, so there is the reading. And let's take our angle now. Okay, so there's trying to zero on the string. And so that's probably our best measure right there. We'll just make sure things are aligned. So we're looking at Oops, we got around 110, not quite. I don't know what it's focusing on. Sorry, there we go. Okay. I'm going to actually lengthen the string and do one more because I'd like to have at least five data points, and I can't go shorter than this. All right, so for our last measurement, um, I don't think it's a repeat of the previous one, but it's going to be close. So I'm, we're dropped back down to just a little over eight newtons. And hopefully this is not an exact repeat of the angle. If it is, so be it. We'll just have two trials of uh, very similar data. Okay, so I guess I should have kept track of that. So we're about 65 degrees here. I thought we had a 60 degree earlier, but maybe not. So between 65 and 70. Okay, so you have your five sets of data. Now, what you're gonna do is follow the instructions very carefully. 
First, you have to convert the angle between the strings to hanging angles. And use the same geometry we used in the tutorial. In fact, on the front, you have a diagram that helps you relate the measured angle right there versus the hanging angle theta h. So don't confuse those. Because as our tensions went up, we should, we should, excuse me, as this angle got smaller or bigger and bigger, this should get smaller and smaller. Okay, then you're going to calculate the components, and I want you to sketch a component here. Sketch one of the tensions like this, and then draw the components, show the trig, then how you found each component, and then fill them in for tension A and B. Okay, so, I'm sorry, tension A is what I showed you. B is going to be the same value. I didn't show you the other spring scale, but it was supposed to be the same value. And then you're just going to find the... Uh, components and fill them in here. Next comes the analysis, and this is where you're going to be challenged. And I, I think you're up for the challenge. So you're going to plot tension versus hanging angle. That should be pretty straightforward. You can do that on your graphing calculator and sketch it right there. Okay, now then I want you to do some further analysis. When you, when you test this, you're not going to get a line with tension versus angle. So I'm going to ask you to try to linearize it. And to figure out how to linearize it, you're going to do a derivation. You're going to figure out how to find tension as a function of the angle theta, m, and g. In other words, you're going to come up with an equation that has either tangent in it or cosine or sine. This is just a sample one. This is not the right equation. So you can do a derivation based on equilibrium. In other words, the vertical forces are balanced and the horizontal forces are balanced. And if you look at the derivation we did for Huggy Bear, it's a very similar idea. Once you come up with the proper equation that relates T to the mass of the car, G and the, the trig function, then on here you can put T here and the appropriate trig function there and you should get a straight line. And then I'm going to ask you to make a, cal calculate the slope or use a calculator to get the slope and then see if the value of the slope, remember the slope will be equivalent to this value divided by that value if that matches your equation up here. All right, so it's a good little challenge. And then in your conclusion, on a separate sheet, give a thorough explanation and justification of these. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, good luck.